to start the race with Kurt Busch here and Darrell Waltrip. Let's uh, go back a little bit because we had prepared something, Kurt. The term 0 for 83 gives you an idea of what you were up against when racing in Martinsville last Sunday. But after a bumpy 500-lap ride, surprisingly, I know even to you, right, victory lane. Quite a journey for the 2004 champ who knows all about the long and winding road full of ups and downs. For me, I've, I've always been a racer just for results. PR, image side of things, it was something that I didn't necessarily understand. It was just, hey, worry about the race car, worry about the wins. It's created this image that, um, for lack of a better term, you just let the rough edges drag. Very surprised at Martinsville. I mean, that track has been my worst over the years. I didn't get a, a top 10 there my whole time at Penske Racing. It's kind of funny, that's where Roger and I had it out on the radio, uh, talking to him um, and referred to him as Dude, and now I'm driving Gene Haas' car to Victory Lane. That Dover picture is probably one of the toughest pictures to hang up, because it, that was uh, the last moment in Victory Lane that I felt like I was going to get for a while, but that win was, was something of some writing on the wall, but it also is a, uh, a significant point of how it took so long to get back to Victory Lane. Working with the Armed Forces Foundation has taught me so much, and it's allowed me a chance to share my stories of struggles, to relate them to theirs, even though theirs are much more serious than mine. This is a strong crusade that I've been on. The Armed Forces Foundation gives me that platform to do so. Oh, it meant the world to me to, to have Gene pick me uh, and, and go into the 41 car and develop a brand new team he took a shot on me. Uh, he wanted to go to Victory Lane. That's all he was worried about. This win is a validating win for Gene Haas and myself. The way that, that my journey has been the last couple of years, there's been a lot of support. Comebacks are similar to underdog stories. Sentimentally rooting for that guy. To win, it, it puts it all back into, you know what, I can do. Come back within a comeback uh, with Kurt. Again, congratulations on that, and thanks for being with us. I, I first want to go back to, especially with what happened at Fort Hood this week, uh, your time and interest in helping the servicemen and service women who come back from overseas and dealing with some difficult things to try and help them get their lives in order. Yeah, the unseen battle is uh, the PTSD um, campaign that the Armed Forces Foundation is really a, a big uh, program that we have uh, with support from Walter Reed, Bethesda, and all the medical centers around the country. and. The Armed Forces Foundation has taught me a tremendous amount about how to give back to our military and to give them the respect and honor that they deserve. So with the Fort Hood shooting this week, that's, that's a perfect uh, example of, of what our military is struggling with and, and how we have to put our arms around them. And Stuart Haas Racing was great this week. Uh, they put a decal on the race car um, and, and all of Stuart Haas's cars. And then there we are in Capitol Hill with uh, Speaker Boehner. And uh, he's, he's a strong uh, advocate for our military. Uh, Kurt, I, I have to ask you. Um... I, I know you've told me, uh, handling disappointments, and that's a tough thing for a driver to do. What have you What have you learned from your experiences, and you've had some vast experiences, the ups and downs and, and a lot of bumps, but what have you learned? How have you learned to let go of an incident like at Martinsville Sunday? I mean, I'm, the Kurt that I, I used to know, that probably would have ended your day, but you sucked it up, and you let it go, and you went on to win the race. What, what did you, how did you learn to do that? Well, I suppose it's the way that I felt like that incident went. It wasn't that big of a deal. But I'm just and, talking about it. So in personal life, yeah. It, yeah. sometimes when those bad things happen, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I needed just to take a step back and look at, you know, hey, to win a race, you have to have a team around you. You can't do it individually. And I did a lot of things individually when I first started out in my career and didn't necessarily um, surround myself with the with the key people that it took to be successful at this level and so just taking a step back and not taking life as serious and then of course the lessons i've learned with working with these military guys my bad days don't hold a candle yep. to some of the struggles yep. that these men and women have been through and honestly 
that really has taught me the most is working with our military and giving back. And yeah, we can all learn from that, but your focus and as a driver, do you feel like you're, I know it's just one win here, but back in championship form when you think about your teammates and the, the kind of race team you have to, to be able to really get after a championship? Well, you said it in that sentence. It's to be with a championship team. Uh, Gene Haas believed in me, and uh, here we are a, a, a week removed from a win. Uh, we can't put the cart before the horse, though. We have our work to do and to build up this 41 Haas Automation Chevy and to put it into form by midsummer that when the chase does start we will be a competitive team we don't just want to make it we want to make a run through the chase all right the 41 car uh, will continue Stuart Haas racing with Kurt Busch last week's winner he's going to be joined by we'll all be joined by another Stuart Haas number Kevin Harvick is uh, headed to the Hollywood